Hey everyone, let's talk about Indonesian food. As some of you might know, Indonesia is home to the famous Spice Islands. And that love for flavor definitely carries over to their cuisine. Food is a huge part of Indonesian culture. It brings people together and even defines who they are. Imagine this. There are over 1,300 ethnic groups in Indonesia. That's a mind-blowing number. Each group has its own unique language, sometimes even their own alphabet. Talk about a plural society. Fun fact, my dad was Javanese and my mom was Sundanese. So just to chat with my cousins, I'd need to be a language whiz. Because of this amazing diversity, each ethnic group has its own customs, clothing styles, and even wedding traditions. Can you imagine having two weddings? Because the bride and groom are from different ethnic groups. Talk about a double dose of celebration. But back to the good stuff, food. Each group has its own specialties. You might have heard of rendang, that super delicious beef dish that CNN voted the best in the world twice. That flavorful curry comes from the Padang people in West Sumatra. It's like a super concentrated stew where the beef is cooked until the broth becomes this incredible taste. Because of speaking of curry, it's not everywhere in Indonesia. It became popular in Sumatra, thanks to Indian traders who hit those shores first. That's why Japanese food, for example, leans more towards sweet flavors with palm sugar, while East Java kicks things a bit not with salty dishes. In West Java, the Sundanese people have a good sour and savory combo. They use a lot of fresh veggies, making their cuisine a dream for vegetarians. They're also known for the delicious freshwater fish entrees. But if seafood is your thing, then you gotta check out the Bugis or Makassars from South Sulawesi. They've got some of the best grilled fish you'll ever taste straight from the ocean. Don't worry, they have amazing beef stews too. The point is, the incredible variety of Indonesian food reflects the rich tapestry of cultures in the country. You're really spoiled for choice. And that's the beauty of it. You can't assume food from one reason will taste like another. Some people might find Javanese dishes too sweet, while others crave the spice of Padang food. The only way to know for sure is to dive in and try it all. This video is here to be your guide. We'll explore different videos from people trying Indonesian food for the first time to famous YouTubers taking on Indonesian food challenges. We'll even cover how to cook them down yourself so you can taste those amazing flavors at home. So, bundle up and get ready for a delicious adventure through Indonesia. Let's kick off with some short videos introducing Indonesian food, just to get an idea of what the food looks like and the reaction when people try it for the first time. Also, some idea of the cost of the food in Bali. These videos are only a year old with millions of views. The first video is titled Americans Try Indonesian Food for the First Time. It's got 3 million views, it was published 10 months ago and it's about 13 minutes long. People vs. Food is a channel based in the US. Here's the summary. Let's get this Indonesian food party started. We've got a crew of 3 brave men and 3 fearless women ready to dive headfirst into the delicious world of Indonesian cuisine. 
First up, the national champion, Nasi Goreng, a glorious fried rice dish that's a must try for any visitor. Get ready for fluffy rice bursting with flavor and goodness. Next, we're moving on to gado gado, a colorful salad that's a vegetarian's dream. Think fresh veggies, perfectly cooked egg, hearty potato, protein, packed tofu, and tempeh, all drizzled with a peanut sauce that'll have you begging for more. Feeling a little peckish? No worries. We've got bakso coming up next. This Indonesian street food staple features juicy meatballs in a savory broth, perfect for a quick and satisfying bite. But wait, there's more. Meat Tech Tech is about to take us on a stir-fry noodle adventure. This dish is the ultimate comfort food, and you'll see why once you get a taste of those perfectly cooked noodles swimming in a delicious sauce. And to finish things off on a sweet note, we're ending with Matabak Manis, a sweet dessert pancake filled with a delightful combination of peanuts, chocolate, and cheese. It's the perfect way to end the Indonesian food fiesta. So grab a virtual plate and dig in. The next video is titled, Everything I Ate for $12 in Indonesia. It's got 3.1 million views, was published nine months ago, and is only a minute long. Carissa Eats is a channel based in the U.S. Here's the gist of it. Carissa Dumbacher is a lead vocalist on the Regent Seven Seas Explorer cruise ship. She eats $12 worth of Indonesian food in Bali. That's breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Bali is one of the destinations of the Regent's cruise line. This video is titled, Eating Only Indonesian Street Food for One Day. Just four dollars. Got 1.3 million views. When published five one year ago, and is about 16 minutes duration. Bule in Bali is a town based in Indonesia. Here's what it's about. Meet Jack, a South African who traded in his safari hat for a surfboard, and has been living the Bali dream for three years now. This dude enjoys the good life. Three meals a day, including his morning coffee. But the most surprising part, he spends a fraction of what Carissa spends on food. Here's the secret weapon. Jack has spent three years exploring every corner of Bali, and he knows all the hidden gems when it comes to delicious and affordable street food. No fancy touristy cafes are needed here. Jack is all about that authentic, budget-friendly Bali experience. So while Carissa might be splurging on meals at a popular tourist cafe, Jacques is living large on delicious local eats and stressing his money. Talk about a win-win. This part is the core of my reviews of the food videos. It's focused on street food and bloggers who travel for food. The first video is titled, The Ultimate Indonesian Food Day Trip. Huge nasty leeward feast. It's got 10 million views. Published seven years ago and lasts about 28 minutes. Mark Wins is a channel based in the U.S. He specializes in street food around the world. Here's a summary. In this cool video, Mark dives into Sundanese food with these Jakarta YouTubers, Ken and Gratz, who are serious foodies. The Sundanese people live in West Java, right next door to Jakarta. Ken and Gratz take Mark on a fun little road trip to Bogor, about an hour away from his hotel. First up, Laksa Bogor. A spicy noodle soup that, Mark says, is totally different from the ones he had in Malaysia and Singapore. They also grabbed a bite of a fermented bean sprout dish, totally vegetarian and super unique. But the real star of the show 
was their visit to Ken's family's beautiful country home. Imagine being surrounded by rice fields and fruit trees, pure paradise. Here's where they enjoy a traditional Sundanese feast called Nasi Liwit. Mark and the whole family sat together, sharing a delicious bread on a bed of banana leaves. After soaking up the countryside vibes, they headed back to Bogor for a Sundanese buffet dinner. Apparently, the Sundanese love banana leaves because they also had a bunch of dishes baked in them. Throughout the video, Mark does a great job describing the flavors, and Ken seriously knows his stuff when it comes to food. The only thing that bugged me was the background music. It was Balinese instead of Sundanese. Minor detail, but hey, accuracy is kind of my thing. Speaking of Sundanese food, it reminded me of the amazing feast I had with my family in Bandung. My sister and her husband treated us all, and let me tell you, there would be three Americans at the table, my wife and her two friends, who cleaned their plates. Only the fishbone was left behind. That's how good Sudanese food is. You gotta try it. The next video is titled, Indonesian Seafood Paradise. 23 seafood dishes in one day. Best food in Makassar. Add 869,000 views to published two months ago and lasts about 40 minutes. Mark Greens is a channel based in the US. Here's what it's all about. Mark returns to Indonesia. This video is only a few months old. His previous video, video on Sumanese food was seven years old. Like many who have tasted Indonesian food, Mark is addicted to sambal. Before you try some, you have been warned. Buckle up for a seafood adventure in Makassar, Indonesia. This bustling port city is home to the Bugis and Makassarese peoples, legendary sailors who've been conquering the waves for centuries. They even build their own incredible ships called Pinisi, which they used to trade across the islands. Makassar itself has a rich history from being the center of a powerful kingdom to hosting a Portuguese naval base. These seafaring folks naturally have a deep love for seafood, and Mark is here to dive headfirst into that delicious world. We're talking everything from all kinds of saltwater fish to plump shrimp, Juicy crab and fresh clams. First off, the fish market. Imagine the energy, the calls of the vendors, the glistening fish pile high, the sheer variety that'll blow your mind. Mark gets to see the bounty of the sea firsthand, straight from the night's catch. Next up is a restaurant specializing in grilled seafood. They take the fresh catch from the market and grill it to perfection, season how you like it. The aroma alone is enough to make your mouth water. Feeling adventurous? Mark heads to a renowned restaurant famous for its fish stews. He's a brave soul. He actually loves eating fish heads, and this place does not like nobody's business. For the grand finale, Mark hits up a super popular spot with a mind-boggling 23 dishes on the menu. The hilarious chef owner seems to have a bottomless well of deliciousness, keeping Mark's plate overflowing with all sorts of seafood treats. By the end, Mark is definitely a happy and very full camper. We'll switch to another food and travel vlogger. The next video is titled, Traditional Jakarta food, Street Food You Must Try, Nasi Padang in Jakarta's Best Fried Rice. It's got 2.2 million views, published five years ago, and lasts 12 and a half minutes. Best Ever Food Review Show is a channel based in Vietnam. Here's a summary. 
William Son Buckner is from Minnesota, but now lives in Vietnam. He has 10 and a half million subscribers. Sunny, his nickname, is back with another adventure, this time taking us on a mouthwatering street food tour of Jakarta. But that's not, he's not alone. Joining him is his super fan, Kevin Rizal. These two are about to become our guides to the tastiest corners of the city. First stop is a Padang restaurant, and get this, the buffet comes right to you. Nasi Padang, for those who don't know, is a legendary rice dish from West Sumatra. In here, you only pay for what you pile on your plate. Next up, they're slurping down bowls of bakso, a meatball noodle soup that's kind of like Indonesia's version of the Vietnamese pho. But here's a twist. It's served in a fresh coconut shell. Stop number three is Katoprak Heaven. This vegetarian dish is a Jakarta specialty, featuring rice cake, tofu, and bean sprouts, all smothered in a peanut sauce that'll have your taste buds doing a happy dance. They don't forget the crunch factor either, with krupa or fried crackers and crispy shallots on top. For their final stop, Sunny and Kevin are getting adventurous with goat fried rice. Fried rice is an Asian staple, but this version gets its unique flavor profile from Middle Eastern and Indian influences. Apparently, all those spices are there for a reason, to perfectly balance the strong taste of the goat meat. You know, it's going to be good. So grab your virtual utensils and get ready to drool, because this is one Indonesian street food tour you won't want to miss. The next video is titled Indonesian Street Food Heaven in Medan, Indonesia. Barbecue chicken with spicy noodles and seafood curry. It's got 3.4 million views published six years ago and lasts for 24 and a half minutes. Here's the gist of it. Trevor is originally from Canada. He studied in China and speaks fluent Mandarin. He and his wife, Ting, now live in Dubai after living in Malaysia for two years. Buckle up for a culinary adventure through Medan, a northern Sumatran city that's a true foodie paradise. Our guide this time is Trevor James, and he is about to take us on a mouth-watering journey through the city's vibrant street food scene. Get ready for a delicious mashup of classic Indonesian flavors and unique Chinese influences. Trevor dives into dishes like nasi lemak, a fragrant coconut rice dish, and kwaito, stir-fried flat noodles that are sure to tantalize your taste buds. He also tackles dek bihun, a dish featuring thin rice noodles and succulent duck, and explores the culinary gems of one of Medan's most historic restaurants. But the fun doesn't stop there. The tour wraps up with a seafood feast fit for a king or queen, and a visit to a legendary durian joint. Durian, the fruit that divides pinions like no other, is on the menu, and Turbo Barely bravely tries both the bitter and sweet versions. You can tell that he is a durian addict like many who live in Asia. This tour isn't just about the food, though. As Trevor savors each bite, he also uncovers the rich history and cultural significance that makes Medan such a unique culinary destination. So grab your virtual utensils and get ready to explore Medan's delicious side with Trevor James. The next video is titled 33 Indonesian Street Foods Across Indonesia, Nasi Padang, Yogyakarta Gudeg, and Bandung Barbecue. It's got 2 million views, published one year ago, 
and last for almost an hour. Luke Martin is a town based in Canada. Here's a summary. Buckle up for a delicious adventure across Indonesia with Luke Martin on Chopstick Travel. This time, Luke's on a mission to uncover the top 33 street food gems the country has to offer. Get ready for your taste buds to take flight. One of the most unique finds is Kopi Jess, a coffee drink that comes with a fiery surprise. A piece of flaming hot charcoal plop right in the cup. Don't worry, Luke assures us the coffee doesn't taste smoky, but it does have a nice, slightly bitter kick. Now that's the morning pick-me-up with the difference. The episode dives pulls into a simpler side of Indonesian street food with lupis from Basanjan. This dish might only have three ingredients, but Luke says that the simplicity is what makes it so good. We're talking pure flavor with every bite. So grab your virtual chopsticks and get ready to explore the vibrant world of Indonesian street food with Luke Martin. You might just discover your new favorite snack. After the main entrees, we finished up with desserts or sweets. Indonesian desserts can be very different. The video by Luke Martin gives us a glimpse of some. Here are three videos explaining them. The first video is titled, Strange Desserts and Exotic Fruits in Jakarta, Indonesia. What is going on here? Got a million views, published five years ago and lasts about 10 minutes. By Best Ever Food Review Show, Vietnam. Here's a summary. Sonny has a sweet tooth, and this time he's taking us on a delicious adventure through the world of Indonesian desserts. Unlike what you might be used to, these treats all are all about fresh, vibrant colors that are a total departure for Western desserts. Here in Indonesia, fruit is the king or queen, and butter takes the back seat, so you can indulge without the guilt. Indonesia is blessed with an abundance of tropical fruits, and that translates into a mind-boggling variety of desserts. Sunny dives headfirst into the sugary paradise, trying a whopping eight different treats. Get ready for a flavor explosion as we explore everything from creamy coconut concoctions to refreshing fruit salads. Your taste buds will be thanking you. The next video is titled, First Time Trying Jayco Donuts in Indonesia. Best donuts in the world? It's got half a million views, published six months ago, and lasts almost 19 minutes. Jayesh Kaya is based in the UK. Here's the gist of it. Jayesh is not a foodie, but there is a review of Jayco is great. Jayco is an Indonesian cafe chain that serves donuts, coffee, and frozen yogurt. No, this video is not about street food, and not by food vlogger either, but it's still about sweets from Indonesia. Jayesh and Carolina decided to explore Jayco Dennis in Jakarta. Let's see if their followers suggested a good place to eat. They went all out, trying a bunch of different donuts, from the classic American-style pink donut to a more adventurous avocado car carnation creation. Jayco even had a special donut for Indonesian Independence Day. How cool is that? To wash it all down, they sipped on some refreshing iced tea and a new lychee juice. Sounds like the perfect way to beat the Jakarta heat. Now, avocado carnation donut sparked some conversation. While they both enjoy it, they thought maybe a different type of cream might complement the flavors even better. Guess that just means they'll have to. Go back and experiment some more. The next video is titled Origins of Chendol, Singaporean, Malaysian, or Japanese, on the Red Dot Food Fight, Part 4. It's got 442,000 views, published 10 months ago, and lasted almost 23 minutes. CNA Insider is a channel based in Singapore. Here's a summary of it. Chendol. That gloriously refreshing drink made with coconut milk, palm sugar, and pandan juice is a summertime favorite in Malaysia and Singapore. But where did that delicious treat?
where it actually come from. Buckle up, because things got a little heated online in 2018 when a CNN article explained Chanel belonged to Singapore. Malaysian readers were like, hold on a minute. They argued Chanel was a Malaysian treasure. And then some folks chimed in saying Indonesia might be the Chanel birthplace. Intrigued by the dessert debate, the author of this article decided to do some digging. First stop, Malaysia. They visited a family business that's been turning out Chandel for two generations. Wow, a Chandel dynasty. In Indonesia, Chandel is woven into the cultural fabric and served at weddings and other special occasions. The more the author researched, the stronger the evidence pointed towards Indonesia being the Chandel birthplace. There were even references to the dessert dating way back in history. So after all this detective work, what's the verdict? Chendol seems to have strong roots in Indonesia, earning it the crown as a Chendol champion. But hey, that doesn't mean Malaysia and Singapore can't put their own delicious spin on this del delightful drink. In the end, isn't more Chendol for everyone a good thing? Suppose you live in the U.S. and want to try Indonesian food. Well, you're in luck because here are some videos of places that serve it. One place in Rosemead, California, another in Hollywood, Florida, a few places in Queens, New York. So let's see what they have to offer. The first video is titled, How a 77-Year-Old Indonesian Chef Cooks 300 Lunches Every Day. It has 3.7 million views published one year ago and is about 10 minutes long. Eater is a channel based in the U.S. Here's the story behind Master Chef Xu Chen, the Medan native who had lives for good food and good company. Chef Xu Chen hails from the city of Medan, and there is nothing she lives, loves more than gathering her friends and family around a table overflowing with delicious food. Her restaurant is called Medan Kitchen. It's in Rosemead, California. She has this restaurant that's known for its incredible dishes, especially the spicy ones. We're talking fiery nasi goreng and curries that'll tantalize your taste buds. Lately, thanks to COVID, those restaurant visits have become even more special. Being able to, to connect with loved ones over a shared meal brings her so much joy. There's something truly heartwarming about breaking bread or noodles with the people you care about. The next video is titled, Guy Thierry Tries Indonesian Sumo Dagi. Diners drive in, dive in, and dies with Guy Thierry. It has 708,000 views published three years ago and lasts only two and a half minutes. Food Network is a channel based in the U.S. Here's the gist of it. All righty, foodies, buckle up for a flavor explosion. Gautier is cruising down to Hollywood, Florida, and the, this time he's setting his sights on a place called Krakatoa, a restaurant serving up some especially authentic Indonesian eats. We're talking about the kind of place where the aroma hits you like a wave the second you walk in, and the spices are guaranteed to wake up your taste buds. Guy drives, dives heads first into a dish called the Samur Dog. No, not hot dogs like you might think. This is a flavorful beef dish packed with all sorts of goodies and veggies. He describes it as an absolute flavor experience, and with a name like Krakatoa, you know it's got to be good. But Guy doesn't stop there. He even gets a peek behind the scenes to see how they create this flavor magic. Apparently, the secret lies in something called red seasoning, a special blend that includes ingredients like ginger, garlic, lemongrass, cumin, coriander, turmeric, and lime leaves. Talking about an explosion of aromatics. Can't wait to see Guy devour this Indonesian feast and hear him rave about the deliciousness. Prepare for some serious food envy. The next video is titled, Epic Indonesian Food Tour in New York, most authentic in the USA, has 1, 1, 1 million views, published three years ago, and is about 19 minutes long. Food Brothers is a channel based in the US. Here's a summary of it. 
Hey guys, the Film Brothers are back, and this time they're taking us on a delicious journey through Indonesian food in Queens, New York. Get ready for a serious drill fest, because these guys are diving into all sorts of authentic Indonesian goodies. We're talking about sizzling goat satay, crispy fried tempeh, or vegetarian superstar, savory nasi goreng, fried rice, and of course, the legendary beef rendang, a dish so good it was voted the most delicious in the world twice. But beyond the amazing flavors, the Fung brothers are highlighting something really cool. Queens is home to some of the most authentic Indonesian food you can find in the entire United States. So next time you're craving a taste of Indonesia, you know exactly where to go. Prepare for mouth-watering close-ups hilarious Fung Brother banter, and maybe even a lesson on how to pronounce some of those delicious dishes. Get ready to discover your new favorite Indonesian food spot without even leaving your couch. So if you can't go to an Indonesian restaurant, you can still cook yourself some beef for now. Here are three videos to guide you. The first video is titled Indonesian beef for nuts. It has 908,000 views published nine years ago and lasts about 13 and a half minutes by the Culinary Institute of America, a cooking channel based in the U.S. Here's what's in it. Calling all rendang rookies. Want to learn the secrets behind the legendary Indonesian dish? The video is your guide to slow cook, spicy, meaty perfection. Rendang hails from West Sumatra, and it's basically a party in your mouth. Tender caramelized meat bathed in a symphony of spices and creamy coconut milk. The beauty of rendang is that you can cook it in stages so it fits into your busy life, but the end result is always the same, a mind-blowing caramelized beef curry that'll have you saying, rendang me again. No worries. We won't leave you hanging. The video breaks down everything you need to know, from the perfect beef to coconut cream ratio to the secret sauce blend that makes rendang so darn delicious. So grab your grocery list, thank up the heat on the stove, not your spice level, unless you like fiery, and get ready to experience the magic of rendang. The next video is titled, I made the number one beef in the world, and it blew my mind, Beef Rendang. It has one million views, published three years ago, and is about 11 and a half minutes long. To be everything is a food channel based in the U.S. Here's the story. All right, Rendang Warriors, assemble ready to master the iconic Indonesian dish. This video tutorial is your one-stop shop for both the classic and the convenient ways to make beef rendang. First up, the traditional method, perfect for those who love the slow and steady approach, and maybe on a budget. We're talking about transforming a lower cost cut of beef into a melt in your mouth masterpiece, a secret weapon, a homemade curry paste that's a symphony of flavors, dry chilies for a kick, star anise and cinnamon for warmth, lemongrass, ginger, and garlic for an aromatic punch, and shallots and ground coconut milk to tie it all together. But hey, sometimes life gets busy. That's where the sous vide method comes in. This video shows you how to up that same delicious curry paste, combine it with your beef, and then use the magic of sous vide to slow cook it to perfection at 145 degrees Fahrenheit for a full 24 hours. Then, bam, freeze that thing, and you have rendang strife. But whether you're a traditionalist or a time-saving superhero, the video last week has you covered. Get ready to appreciate the magic of rendang in a whole new way. The next video is titled, Yes, NG Goes to My Country Indonesia. Welcome, Mr. Gordon Renji. Thank you. It has 11,000 views, published three years ago, the last about 47 minutes. Benton News is a channel based in Indonesia. The final video 
is Chuck Gordon Ramsay cooking beef rundown in Western Matra, its place of origin. Now, I've seen this before on the National Geographic channel. He endures a lot in the journey. It's hilarious. He's a great sport. Here's a summary. Gordon Ramsay just landed in Indonesia. He gets summoned to the Royal Palace in West Sumatra. He comes face to face with Chef William Moser, a culinary legend and mentor to Indonesia's top chefs. Chef Moser is a master teacher, but also a taskmaster. Chef Ramsay will participate in a bull race, board a fishing boat, and hunt for shrimp in a cave. His actual rendang cooking starts in the middle. All right, tummy tumblers, that Indonesian food talk was enough to make anyone rule right. But fear not, we're about to switch gears and talk about something else super important, the cost of living in Indonesia. We've been peeking at food prices throughout these video reviews, and in the endless paradise one, we even saw a glimpse of room rates. But that's just the tip of the iceberg, right? We need the full picture, transportation costs, mobile data, the whole shebang. So to get a well-rounded idea, we're going to be checking out videos from travel vloggers who spent some serious time living the Indonesian life in different cities. And hey, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe for more adventures.